pair bonding is something that happens. Uh, the, the first instant of this that we have is with our mothers and then and then fathers. So pair bonding starts in, in the womb. When a mother is pregnant with her baby, the thoughts that she's thinking about the baby and about the pregnancy start forming a sort of the official psychological term for uh, the process of it is called attunement. So your emotions and your baby's emotions start fusing together. So if I'm feeling happy, my baby's feeling happy. If I'm feeling fear, my baby's feeling fear. And we start like we're attuned to each other's needs. And then as the baby is born, for the first three years, the baby is still from its point of view, like attached to the mother. It doesn't know it's not attached to you. It doesn't know that you and it are separate. That's why it's highly recommended that you do not put your babies in daycare because they it's it to them it feels like a limb was cut off because they don't know how to survive without thinking that they are a part of your you they don't know that they're a separate being after three years of age is and if they receive that they start then feeling secure and realizing that they're a separate person if they didn't receive that pair bonding from their mother and father especially their mother then they go their entire life having a nervous system that is seeking something it's hunting something it thinks it wants friendships and it thinks it wants validation and it thinks it wants to people please and it thinks it wants romantic love and twin flame relationships and all this stuff what it really wants is to re to attune with the mother first and foremost and that teaches it how to form other healthy relationships so the first pair bonding that we ever have is with our mother and then the second one is with our father so what uh, this is why when you are you know when you have a baby now they're recommending this this is something that was natural if you study um even like closest to hunter-gatherer societies now in Africa, you'll see that they wear their babies on their person because when they're wearing their baby, the baby still feels like it's attached to you and it can heal your, he, hear your heartbeat and you're very attuned to it. So when you're attuned to your child and your child is attuned to you, if your child is crying and, and you're nearby and you're smiling, your attunement will, will soothe the child. Okay, notice that babies, you know, when you're calm and you're holding your baby, they're going to stop crying. But if you're anxious and you're holding your baby, they will become anxious. So anytime I have someone asking me, I have, you know, anxious children, I'm like, are you an anxious person? Did you, attune, like, did you, did you teach them how to calm themselves down through, through you calming yourself down? So th the attunement part is a really important part of our pair bonding. So when you have a baby... You want to spend a lot of time doing skin to skin. That's where that comes from. Um, I think a lot of people do this without being taught why they're doing it. But you're attuning to the baby. And the the baby thinks basically it's like, think of the baby as imagining that it's your arm or something. And now you like drop off your arm at daycare and like it can't attune to you. It doesn't know. And it's got all these strangers with, with energy that it doesn't recognize because it was in your womb. And these people are just changing its diaper and feeding it. It doesn't, it doesn't form that bond. Those babies tend to cry a lot more. They're a lot more anxious. They don't know their place in the world because that cycle was bro broken. So first pair bonding starts between, you know, mother and baby when it's born. When you get married to someone and like, let's say you followed my blueprint. You didn't have any relationships before marriage. Let's say you were born, you got to healthy, you were healthy, you had a healthy pair bond with your mom, you had a healthy pair bond with your father and your siblings. As you got older, you went to college, you did all the things, but you didn't date, you didn't have sex, and then you get married. Let's say at 25, you get married. When you get married, you and your husband, now through, you know, being physical with each other, uh, having those hormonal connections, touching physical touch, making eye contact, being there for each other, being in each other's energy are starting to pair bond. You know how to pair bond because your parents pair bonded with you and you didn't artificially pair bond with people who left you. When a boyfriend and girl situation, you get the esteem, esteem signal that this person is testing me out. They don't, I'm not 
amazing. I'm not great. They're not sure about me. They're testing me out. Which, as a woman, we don't have any history of that. We don't get tested out.、Uh, we choose. So it it destroys. It destroys your self esteem. It. We just don't have any history of it. You're literally a a project. You're a guinea pig project. You know. Um, if I would never have spoken about this 25 years ago when I when I discovered the actual research part, even though I knew the part, the other part from my culture, because I didn't have enough data. And one thing in evolution is there is something called the naturalistic fallacy. Fallacy, I think that's the correct word, where they say that there is a belief that just because something is natural. That it's good, but some things could be natural and not good. So I was like, okay, well, everyone's dating and doing all this stuff, but it hasn't been proven yet that it's bad. Maybe it's good, right? Now we have all the freaking data that is horrid. It's bad, and I actually have built an entire business on healing people、uh, that have gone through that. So I'm like, oh my god, the results are in, and it's horrid. I need to start speaking up about this. That's where that content came about. Like, don't be a girlfriend and all of that stuff. Because it matches our evolutionary history, it matches my cultural history, it matches every religion in the world, and it matches like all of the data. Okay, so like we can't deny it from anywhere. What happens then is that your self esteem goes plummets, and you short circuit the pair bonding、uh, abilities, those hormonal bonds. You lose that. So if you had three or four boyfriends, and then you get married. You're gonna have a very hard time pair bonding. You can, of course, you can do your inner work and heal. It's just gonna be a lot harder. And men, unfortunately, are coming more aware of this than women.、Um, men are tend to be more logical and rational and study data and all of these things a lot more. Men, women these days lend, tend to be a little bit more delusional about this stuff. Don't wanna, don't wanna believe it. Don't wanna look at it. So a lot of men. That are talking about this stuff in the men going their own way community, even though some of them have really bad intentions for women, they're using actual science to prove to it to other men. And men can't deny the rational part, the science. They listen to other men. So if you are not informed, if you don't understand this stuff, you have an another a whole other disadvantage because now more and more men are awakening to the fact that. Women that have been in all these relationships have the, this psychological and self-esteem damage, and this was not like public information before. We had no history of it. We didn't know it's a thing. Now we have a history of it, and men are learning that it's a thing. Okay, so yeah, that's why like the more relationships that you've had, the more failures you have as, as a relationship. So this is something that you do need to understand. That it's 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 harder to pair bond if you've had all of these fake relationships. So that was a very long answer. Did that help you? I hope that helps. Okay. So one thing that Irfan and I did. This is TMI. Sorry,、uh, can't believe I'm sharing this. But because we both were coming from failed marriages, my husband was divorced previously, and so was I. We knew that our pair bonding system could be compromised, especially since we also both had mothers that were working, and、um, we weren't exactly sure if in the first three years we got that pair bonding that we should have. Right?、Um, it when you're under three, you don't know, right? And I can't even ask my mom because she's gone. So. You, we, we were, we were assuming that we don't know how to pair bond, and we purposely did certain things. So one of the exercises that we did is TMI, sorry, but you take off your clothes and you、uh, do skin to skin with your partner with absolutely no like sexual、um, like feeling to it, because obviously when you're making love, you know you're. Naked, whatever. But in the, in the, when you're in that mode, it is pair bonding, but it's a little bit more like sexual, right? It's a little bit more romantic. We wanted to start off with also doing it in a non-sexual, non-romantic way. So, so we, of course, when we're sleeping together, you know, that also does it. But we also wanted to almost do it in a way that was more like family-like, even. So we're healing that like initial. Fam,、uh, like the initial wound, the relational wound, and what you want to do. So first step is to do that. A couple of weeks, you know, you don't have to do it every day, but you know, do that. Like you know, just being with each other, physical touch. 
the second layer to, on top of it is you want to like do gentle touch on each other but with like no sexual like you, what you don't want is the other person to think oh they're only doing this because they want sex like keep sex out of it and have some times where you're just naked doing skin to skin and like just gently like holding each other and caressing each other but in a non-sexual way what this does is it like calibrates your and his nervous system and it attunes you to each other so um i've said this before and i used to be scared of saying this but whatever you guys think if i'm weird I'm, if we're weird we're weird but like i the marriage that i have you know 15 years is we have like my husband's my lover he's my partner he's also my best friend but i also like i remember when my dad died like i felt orphaned because my mom had already died but then seeing my husband have like fatherly tendency, like being a father to my kids and like taking care of me, not only as a lover and a best friend and a husband, but also in fatherly ways and also in motherly ways made me feel not orphaned. I know this sounds weird, but we provide each other with everything that we both need. We're in tune to each other's needs. Um, let me give you an example today. So Ifan always buys like all of my favorite foods and puts them in my in in the refrigerator. And so today he was watching a very important game. And you guys know Pakistani men and their cricket, like their game. So he like I know when he's watching that this game, like he's all in, right? And so I um couldn't find this curry that I was gonna have for lunch. And so I texted him. He was in the media room upstairs. I was downstairs in the kitchen. I texted him. I said, Hey, did we did we still have such and such left? Okay. I saw, like, I mean, so I heard him, like, rushing down the stairs. And I'm like, oh, my God, I didn't want to disturb you. He's like, no, 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 I saved it for you. It's in the back of the fridge. So he came out, and then he came down, and he, like, took it out for me. And I'm like, you could have just told me where it was. I didn't want to disturb your game. But, like, that's pair bonding, right? So, like... <laughs> he's so funny and I was telling him I didn't want to interrupt your game you could have just literally texted me and he's like it's okay so he had saved me some and put in the back of the fridge so that's what happens when you pair bond with someone is that you start like you think of their needs before they think of their needs like you're attuned to their feelings like I know at the exact times of days that like Irfan will be craving chai like chai is like this Pakistani tea, right, that he drinks. And like, I'll make it for him before he even, and every time I give it, he's like, how did you know? I'm like, I could tell. So like, that's the, just like a mother would know what her child needs before her child wants it or needs it or says it, it that's pair bonding. So you can do that with your with your partner you can do that with your children you can do that with your friend like you can as a human you can pair bond and that's why boyfriend and girlfriend relationships are so dangerous because you start some of the processes of pair bonding without all of the safety without all of the benefits and it really confuses it's like um it's the same feeling as if like being born from this mother who you're already in tune to and then she like drops you off somewhere and like, she can't be there. And I totally get it. Like I was a single mom. I like, I had to do that stuff. So like, I told you guys, I've had to do inner work with Arman around that. My younger two had all the peer bonding with me and Irfan, but my oldest, that was my situation. So I totally understand it. However, it inside, it like elicits the same feeling on, uh, in us of abandonment, of um, betrayal. So that's why stay away from boyfriend and girlfriend relationships do yourself that honor and any man that cares about you and loves you and understands like it's not gonna want that think of it only a predator would want to put you at risk for like psychological and physical harm like no one else would do that to you